by changing, we're flying high, creating a complaint-free world, no more, no more, complaining people, their lives are changing, we're flying high, creating a complaint-free world, no more, no more. I have gotten addicted to two television shows and I'm surprised to be very honest with you. Not only am I not a guy who grew up following sports because my older brother was gay, not into sports. My father only came home to yell and hit us, hit us pretty much. That's my memory and never came to any of our baseball games, never threw through ball with us or anything like that. So any appreciation I had for sports was pretty second hand. I was a fat kid. I played basketball and baseball, but I didn't play football, which is probably where I would have played better uh, because I was so fat. Uh, <clears throat> the two shows that I'm addicted to right now, one, you know, Ted Lasso, we've talked about it a lot, a lot, a lot. And then I was addicted. I watched the show twice called Bloodline. Now, Bloodline is awesome. It's on Netflix and it was all filmed right here in my neighborhood. So if you want to know what Key Largo looks like, it's all filmed in Key Largo and Isla Mirada, which is the first island south of here. And there's a guy who stars in it. I think his name is Kyle Chandler. He is uh, dark hair, dark eyes. He's very good at being stoic. He played the sheriff in Bloodline, and he also played the coach in, in Friday Night Lights. I've seen Friday Night Lights pop up on my Netflix recommendation a dozen times, and I never watched it because it's about football. And the reason I never watch football is, I mean, I understand some of the game, but invariably, if you start to watch football, somebody will say, what do you think? What do you think of the Panthers game or the uh, Kansas City Chiefs game or whatever, because, oh, you live in the Chiefs there. What did you think of last two Thursday's game? And there's a level of knowledge that I find that most sports fans expect you to have <laughs> that's that I just feel kind of embarrassed. Um, I don't really know because of, invariably they not only want to talk about that game, they want to talk about how that player did in the game previously and how that player is not this as good as this player, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so I've always just sort of eh, kind of stayed away from sports because I, was, I felt stupid when people would try and talk to me about it. And yet the two shows that I'm addicted to, Ted Lasso and now Friday Night Lights, because I lay on the floor yesterday while my neck was healing and watched probably 14 episodes of Friday Night Lights. Wasn't at all what I expected it to be and thoroughly enjoyed it. And what I've noticed is that the common thread between those two shows is not sports. It's not sports. It's a strong coach. It's somebody I can look up to and respect as a coach, someone who really is doing the very best they can for their players. And you'll see that both in Ted Lasso and in Friday Night Lights. Um, while at the same th time, especially in Friday Night Lights, doing everything they can to win, doing what is necessary to win through hard work. And one of the things is Coach Taylor is the name of the Kyle Chandler's character in Friday Night Lights. I kept expecting him. You, you keep expecting him to break down in a um, emotional way because he's got so much pressure on him. You keep expecting him to react angrily. And yet he rarely, if ever, does. He is able to just keep it inside and remember what the role of coach is. And the role of a coach is to help people see what they can't see in themselves, to notice things that are going wrong. I started playing pickleball, many of you know, a couple of months ago, and I've gotten somewhat serious about it. When I'm in town, I go down and play and there's 30 to 60 people who gather every day to play pickleball. And it's, so it's a lot of fun. It's a very social thing. The problem with, with it, it is, as I've shared before with you, one of the people there said this to me, he said, well, everybody knows you. Everybody likes you. Nobody just, want, no, but nobody wants to play with you because you're not good enough. And I thought about this idea of watching more and more YouTube videos. And I think that's a good idea, but I just kept getting more and more confused. 
So I hired this coach. There's a man here named Scott Van, and I want to recommend him. He's a great guy, Vaughn, B-A-N. And he owns a company called Dink, D-I-N-G-K. When you play pickleball, after you serve from the line, your whole goal is to get up about six feet from the net, five feet from the net. It's called being outside the kitchen. And you stand there at that line, and then the game becomes ping pong. Tap, 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 tap. Ding. It's called dinking. The idea is to get yourself and the other person to where you're dinking as quickly as possible, because that's where the, the power in the game comes in. The softer you hit it, causes the person to scoop it up. If you hit it real soft and it just barely gets off the ground, it causes the person to scoop it up. And that's the whole goal. Force the other player to have to scoop the ball to keep it in action. And when you do, it's going to come right at your face and you're able to kill it. Well, I was out playing quite a bit. And one of the things that I noticed was I was always on the losing team. And I was always the reason we lost. That may be a bit strong. There are several other people there <clears throat> who are not really good players, and that's who I tend to play with. But I wanted to get better, and I wanted to get better quickly. So I, I hired Scott, this guy that owns Dink, the paddleball company. He also does pickleball company, rather. He also teaches lessons. So I went and met with Scott. And he was a coach, in my opinion, straight out of Ted Lasso or straight out of Friday Night Lights. We met early one morning, like 7, 30, 8 o'clock. And he immediately started, he noticed we just tapped the ball around a little bit. He says, okay, now this is what we have to work on. And one of the things I never realized is when someone serves to you, it has to bounce. And then when you hit it back, they have to let it bounce to prove that the shot is in. Well, what I tend to do is when the shot comes at me, the serve, because I'm a former racquetball player, I know how to hit the ball hard and I want to keep the person towards the back line so I have time to run up to the net. So I hit the ball hard. I drive it right at the person, which is an acceptable thing, but it's not smart. Scott said, you're an older guy. You're in your 60s. You need an extra few seconds to run to the net that younger people don't need. Now, I'm probably one of the younger people there, but there's a lot of people there who play that game. But he says, you need to not hit the ball hard. Instead, return the ball by lobbing it. The person has to, has to let the ball bounce. So why not lob it to give yourself two to three extra sec seconds to run towards the line? And I thought, I never, ever would have thought of that. I never would have thought of that. So he had me work on that. So we worked on it. We worked on it. He hit me a serve. I'd log, lob it back. He'd hit me a serve. I lobbed it back. I think we did probably 30 of those. And then we, he hit me 30 serves to my backhand and my job was to log it, lob it back. <clears throat> I always tell people though, it's kind of like if you ever saw that old Robocop movie when he lost his ability to shoot and they had to dial it in and he was shooting baby jar, baby uh, bottle, baby food jars off of a fence. And they're dialing his, his thing in. Well, with pickleball or any sports or anything like that, there's a time of dialing in. You're going to stink at it. So even these little lob returns on the forehand side, none of them went to the right till we got to the correct spot. Till we got probably two thirds of the way through. Then we switched to the backhand. What do you think? All of them went wrong, went wide, went short, went into the net, whatever, until I did it enough. And he kept getting me to do it, do it, do it, do it. Now, another common thing in pickleball is that when you rush the net, which you're supposed to do when you stand there just outside the kitchen, people will often, that, that is a, it's a good spot because you can control the game, but people are going to try and drive you out of it by hitting the ball at you as hard as they can, right at your chest or right at your face. You try not to hit somebody's face, but that is a very common return. And so he had me go up there and stand at the line and he hit these driving shots at me as hard as he could. And every time he did, I would do this. I mean, I was trying to hit it, but I was mostly just trying to duck. And then he said, you flinched. So I didn't flinch. He said, yeah, you flinched. So he did it again. He said, you flinched. I said, I'm not flinching. He said, well, you are flinching. You may not see it. You may not know it, but I'm standing right here and I'm watching you and you're flinching. 
So I stood there and forced myself and luckily one of the balls hit me. Now I say luckily because then I realized, <clears throat> realized it's not going to hurt. There's no need to flinch. Just stand there. So I did. Well, I had one coaching session, just one coaching session, right? I went out the next day and I went to play and I played with all my usual people, the people who are about my level. And we won our first game. All my serves went in. That lobbing return gave me so much more time to get to the line. The driving, having people drive at me and not flinching, but just tapping the ball down was amazing. And I even got to where I was driving the ball to people who were already at the line, putting them under pressure. All of that happened within a one and a one half hour coaching session, which cost me a dollar, uh, not a dollar, rather a hundred dollars. It felt like a dollar for all I learned, a hundred dollars for all that I learned. So I went out, like I said, and I played and my team won. So then you switch up, you get on a different team. It's doubles. So I played with somebody else. We won again. Play with somebody else. We lost. Play with somebody else. We won again. So we play, I played in a total of seven games and one, we won five out of those seven games. Now this is after me having played probably a hundred games in which case I was on the winning team twice, just twice. And it was because of this doctor uh, from Louisiana who was here and he was vacationing and we really hit it off and he knew I was a bad player, but he'd be willing to play with me because he was such a good player that we still won. Well, he's gone. He moved back to, he went back to Louisiana about six weeks ago. And I have then been on the losing side of all these games until the other day. Now, prior to this, I had asked everybody, how do I hold a paddle? How do I, you know, what's my follow through? I'd asked all my, the people there and they're like, you need to ask somebody who really knows. I just kind of learned this game on my own. And the funny thing was, there's one guy there named Russ, who's a really good player. There's a handful of people there that are, they compete in tournaments. That's what they do. And he was really, he's really good. I never, I think I played against him once and just got creamed. He was there for a coaching lesson too. Think about that. Right after my lesson ended, he had his lesson. So no matter at what level you are, you need a great coach. I'm coming to you today to remind you about the coaching that is available to you through our Develop Your Life program. I'm going to find the URL and I'm going to post it here for you. There we go. We did Develop Your Tw Potential 2021, which I know a number of you came to, working with Achieve Today Coaching. They connected me with the other uh, speakers, etc. They were sort of the middleman. We worked together and they agreed to set up coaching, free coaching consultations for everyone who attended. And I've gotten them to extend that now. So we had dozens of people sign up for a free coaching call. And the interesting thing is I got a message from them yesterday that said that, you know, we get a lot of people sign up, but very few people follow through once they sign up. She said, every, he said, rather, everyone who signed up for Develop Your Potential 2021 coaching has not only shown up for their consultation, but are moving forward. So I want to invite you. We all need a life coach. If you feel stuck, you are stuck. I was stuck in everything I was doing with pickleball until Scott came along. Now we've got another uh, thing coming up on Saturday. I want to give my neck a few days to heal, but planning to meet together again on Saturday. If you have never looked into coaching, think, of, <laughs> I like to say it's therapy with a purpose. In other words, you get there from the very beginning and it's not just <gasps> what happened to you this week or going into your parents. It's very action oriented. So I want to encourage all of you to check out coachingcall21.com coachingcall2021.com. I put the URL there in the comments section. Check it out. Schedule it. It's no obligation. You get 45 minutes, just basically talk to a coach and evaluate the sticking points in your life and figure out what you want to do about it. We all have sticking points. And I can tell you that in my life, every time I have made a major improvement, I've hired a coach. I hired a coach to coach me when I first got into professional speaking and I was getting paid 
well, and I was getting uh, standing ovations. So you'd think, why in the world would you need a coach? I'd been speaking in churches for 20 years. Well, this coach came and watched me one day, and I've shared this story with you before. I thought I was going to get off stage, and she was going to say, oh, you were great. You are awesome. I have nothing to help you with. You're the best. Coach me. <laughs> wrong. Wrong. We got together the next day to go over what she she had 10 pages, front and back, of things I could improve. Little things. For example, I have this habit of buttoning and unbuttoning my coat jacket, my suit jacket when I'm speaking. She says, button it before you get on or don't touch it and leave it. And she was right. It was distracting. Another little thing that I tend to do that a lot of speakers do, and I caught myself doing this the other day. I'm so comfortable when I'm on stage that I often will sneak my left hand into my pocket and I'll walk around talking like this with my left hand inside of my pocket. Well, one of the things she taught me was never put your hands near your crotch. I don't care if it's to go on your pants, <laughs> if it's to go in your pocket, or if it's to tuck your shirt tail in. When you're on stage, never put your hands near your crotch. Little things like that that I never would have noticed. And I credit the thousand dollars I paid her with the fact that my speaking fees have now more than doubled. Did I have that $1,000 at the time? Not really. Did I want to pay it? Nope. Did I want to hear a coach telling me everything I was doing wrong? Nope. But it's the only way to get better. You need somebody outside of you who can see what you're doing and what you can't see. And I, <clears throat> I would have to say, having been in therapy literally almost all my life, a coach has helped me more in a shorter period of time than a ton of therapy emotionally. And the same is true when it comes to anything physical you want to learn. You want a coach. So I could bludgeon you with stories like this all day. I just know that maybe one or two of you will actually reach out to coachingcall2021.com. I hope you will. I think you're going to be amazed. Adam um, Mortimer, who spoke as part of Develop Your Potential 2021, is the head of the coaching program. So if you watched Adam, and I think he was one of the better speakers at Coach Your, uh, Develop Your Potential 2021, and we were all good, <laughs> but Adam was just like, wow, so much great information. And he runs the program. So check out develop, uh, excuse me, coachingcall2021.com. That is coachingcall2021.com and schedule your coaching call now. It's free. Just find out where you, where you, Get a better idea of where you are, and more importantly, how to get where you want to be. It's available for all of us. No Linda more, says Adam is no great. more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint-free world. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating. Thank you.